so far we found the weighted mean and then we found the mean for frequency distribution where the x values were discrete and the frequencies were whole numbers so it was a frequency distribution you learn that definition in chapter 2 a little bit and then we found the mean for a relative frequency distribution where the x values were still discrete even though there's a decimal here, that's still discrete because you couldn't have, for example, 90.623427%. It was 90.6% and that's it. And the weights were decimals. So even though it was a relative frequency distribution using relative frequency, i.e. percents or decimals, it's still the same basic concept. So no harm, no foul. It seems pretty easy. So now we want to expand upon that to talk about continuous data, data that fall in a region or a zone. Okay, so before we need to do that, we need to back up and learn a definition from chapter two. Actually, a couple definitions. So let's first look at this data set, and then I can use this to kind of explain the definitions as we go. So the following frequency distribution, and it is a frequency distribution. You can see the frequencies right over here, not relative frequencies because they're not decimals or percents. But this is a frequency distribution that shows the fan cost index for attending an NBA professional basketball game um, for the 2015-2016 season for all the NBA teams. So they, every year consumers, um, Consumer Reports and other organizations try to figure out how much does it cost for a family of four, approximately, to go to a game um, for each of the NBA teams. So that includes four tickets, two beers, four soft drinks, four hot dogs, two programs, and two baseball caps um, with the team logo and the parking fee for a car. So what does it take to take the family? Well, you can see that rather than being given specific values, we're being given a range of values. So we have eight teams that are costing somewhere between $300 and $349 for a family of four, but we don't know how much in that range? Are they all at 300? Or are they all at 310, 320? We don't know, right? So we weren't given that information. And that creates a problem for us because we need something that we can put into our calculator for L1 and L2. I mean, I can see L2 from a mile away. It's the frequencies, no problem. But what am I going to put in for L1? I need one number that's going to represent this class. That's what those are called, classes. And this class of NBA teams and this class of NBA teams. So I need a number per class. And the fairest number to pick is something called the midpoint. It's the number that's in the middle of the class. Now how do you find that? Well you find that by taking consecutive lower class limits and adding them up and dividing by two. In other words you're taking the mean of consecutive lower class limits. Alright so let's back up the truck just for a second. Classes. All right, classes are these groupings. You can see there's a lower number and a higher number. The lower number is called the lower class limit. The higher number is called the upper class limit. So I want consecutive lower class limits. I want to take, let's say, 250 is one class's limit. The next class's limit is 300. So I want to take 300. That's the next class's lower class limit. I want to add up those two numbers and I want to divide by two. Okay, how do you do that? All right, so clear. Oop, hold on, wrong way. I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> there it is. There, there we go. So now I want to take 250, I want to add it to 300, close my parentheses, and divide by two. In other words, now here's the other way to do it, alpha F1. Any TID4 can do this, and if your TID4 cannot do this, then you need to upgrade to the newest operating system, either by connecting to TI through the website, or coming into the Center for Student Success, or coming into my office, or um, any pretty much math instructor can help you. But you basically need to connect your calculator to somebody else's and download the newest operating system. All right, so you can see number one is numerator over denominator. You're in the fraction menu, F-R-A-C, and you want N divided by D, numerator divided by denominator. And again, I got there with alpha F1. So I hit number one, and I say 250 plus 300, and I use my arrow key to get down to the bottom. So I arrow down, and I press 2, enter, 
and there you have it. Now the one number one mistake students make is they do this. So what the calculator thinks you want is 250 plus 300 over 2. That's what the calculator thinks you're trying to do when you typed this without parentheses, which is not at all what you want. I mean, think about it. You want a number somewhere between 250 and 299.99. 400 is nowhere in there. So 275, however, is. So that's the one that we want. So double check and make sure that whatever number you come up with makes sense for the context of your problem. Right? Don't say it's 400. Right? What you need is parentheses. 250 plus 300 divided by 2. Or you need to use the alpha F1, pick number 1, 250 plus 300 divided by 2. 275 is perfectly reasonable. That is halfway between 250, and remember, this isn't really 299.99. It's really 299.99999999 forever. All right, now what about the next one? Well, I could do it again. I could hit alpha F1, pick number 1, 300 plus. Now, the next one after this is 350. So I take 300 plus 350 and add them up and divide by 2 and that gets me 325. Now you can see that this is going to be tedious and there's another problem as well. So let me just type this in real quick. One, I don't want to do this for every single one. That would be annoying, right? This is tedious and it's yucky. There's got to be an easier way and there is. So number one, this is tedious. Number two, there is an easier way. I'm going to show it to you in a minute. And number three, you're going to end up in trouble. And that's because there are such things as open-ended classes. Classes that don't have either a lower or an upper limit for whatever reason. You can have them on the low side like I do here. So I don't have a lower limit. You don't know what it is. It's not necessarily 200. It could be 150. It could be 175. You don't know. So you don't have a lower limit. You can also be missing an upper limit on the high end, which I think I have an, yeah, up here. On the next example, I have an upper end limit. So it goes 100 to, uh, who knows, right? So you can have problems with either end. They don't have to be open-ended classes, but if there are, you're in trouble with the method we just used because we don't have a lower limit or an upper limit, depending on which way you're going. So that means that we have to use another way. So we've gone over how to find the first midpoint. All you have to really do is find one by hand. Then you can use something called the class width in order to find the rest of the midpoints after the first midpoint has been found. So what is the class width? Well, it's the difference in consecutive lower class limits. But let me show you what I mean. So look at the numbers for your lower class limits. 250, 300, 350, 400, 450, 500. Are you noticing a pattern? Do you see how they're all 50 apart? Look at the upper class limits. They actually do the same thing. 299 to 349. That's 50 apart. Add 50 and you get 399. Add 50, you get 449. Add 50, you get 499, and so on. So your class width is actually 300 take away 250, which is 50. Now how does that help us? Well, we can use that to find all of our consecutive or all of our midpoints other than the first one that we found. So let's say we found this one right here, which we did. We found the 275 as our first one. Okay, so we found that one first, and we found this next one second. To find the next one, all you have to do is 325 plus 50, because 50 was your width, and lo and behold, it's 375, and you don't have to do all this work. The next one's 425, because that's what 50 plus 375 is. 475, 525, 575, and 625. So I found all of them by just adding the width in my head, in case you don't believe me. 325 plus 50, plus 50, plus 50, plus 50, plus 50, plus 50 right? See, there they all are. Now how does this help me find this other one that I didn't have a width for, excuse me, a 
a lower class limit for. Well, if you want to work your way adding 50 to get you up, then just take away 50 to work your way down and you'll get 225 for the first one because 225 plus 50 gets you 275. See how they're all 50 apart all the way along. Oops, I missed one down there, 675 for that last one. And there you have it. It should all be consistent and it should work even if you had open-ended classes, which you might not. But if you do, just find one of them. Really all I needed to find was this yellow one. Once I found this yellow one and then I know the class width is 50, I can use that fact to find the rest of them. Right? So the 50 got used right here. I technically found two by hand, but that's just because I felt like it. So, but the rest of them, I could just add 50, add 50, add 50, and you don't have to show any of the work, to be honest. You can just find them all. It's all good. So I know that you know how to add and or use your calculator to add. So there you go. That's how to find the class midpoints, and that's what class midpoints are, right? This, in case you missed it, 275 truly is the middle of that region. So if you took looked at 250 to 299.99999, 275 is smack dab in the middle of that. 325 is smack dab in the middle of 300 to 349.99999 and so on. These numbers should make sense. So look back and make sure, does it make sense? Is 525 in between 500 and 549.99? Sure, it's exactly in the middle. So we know what those class midpoints are now, and we know what the class limits are. We kind of learned that. And then we also learned what the class width was and how to use that to our advantage to make things easier, right, as an A, to make thing, your life simpler. And that trick will work even if the classes are open-ended, either on the low side or the high side.